applications of matrices in variant points and lines. Invariant points and lines occur for many matrix transformations. They can be found by looking for an invariant point is one which is not moved. And so when the matrix times the vector of the point ends up equaling the vector of the point, it is an invariant point. Of course, the origin is always an invariant point, and that we can see that because it's a solution to this equation. For any matrix, we can then solve this equation, and this will tell us uh, whether there are more invariant points than just the origin. So here's a simple example. Let's take the matrix like this, C, 2, minus 1, 3, minus 2. So what we do is we put it into our equation at the top here. So we say, looking to solve this equation. Well, we can now work out the left-hand side as a matrix product. <coughs> so we get 2u minus v and 3u minus 2v. Uh, and now we've got a pair of simultaneous equations to solve. Yeah, so we say 2u minus v is u, the top equation, and 3u minus 2v is v. Let's just simplify each of these equations. One is u equals v. The other is 3u equals 3v. Since these two equations are identical, we do actually have a solution. And our solution is that x equals y. If these two equations were different, the answer would be there's no, there's no invariant point because it has to satisfy both equations. And if they're not basically the same equation as they are here, there's no invariant points apart from the origin. OK, so we've seen that, that y equals x is a line of invariant points. For instance, let's consider the simplest point, therefore, x equals 1, y equals 1. When we put that into our expression here on the left, we get for the new x coordinate is 1 and the new y coordinate is 1, which agrees. Therefore, that's just confirming any point on the line y equals x is not moved by this transformation c. So we have not only have invariant points, but we have a whole line of them. This is called a line of invariant points, which is not the same as what we're going to look at next, which is an invariant line. An invariant line is a line where the image of any point on the line is also on the line. Okay, whereas the line of invariant points is a special case of this. So if we look at what's happening here, it may be that this point here goes over to this one here. This point here goes over to there. This point here comes over to down there. Each of the images is still on the line. This would be an invariant line. Okay, and um, there might be, well be one point on here which goes to itself. But apart from that, the points go to somewhere else on the line. These are more difficult problems to solve unless we're giving, given an extra piece of information. OK, so here's an example. You might be asked to show that this is an invariant line for this matrix. OK, uh, oh, what sort of matrix is this? Ooh, determinant is 1. And if you... No, determinant is minus 1. It's a reflection. OK, let's have a quick look at this. OK, so we consider a point on this line. Let's, where x is u, y would therefore be 1 minus a half u. So what's this image point? Well, this is where we'd go back to doing more matrix multiplication. Yep, so we multiply these together and we get a nasty looking equation. But we can then simplify it a bit more when we work out the expanding of the brackets. And we get, for the top line here, 0 0.8 minus u, and for the y coordinate, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5 u. We're wanting this point to be on the line, and therefore we should find, if we work out what the y coordinate is in terms of u dash. Well, the y coordinate is 1 minus a half lots of u dash, u dash is that, so we put that in. So this is the y coordinate of, of that point, the image of that point. It's here. It works out to be 0 0.56 plus 0 0.5 u dash. 
which fits with this and therefore that all fits and we've now shown that this is an invariant line because the new point has the correct relationship between u dash and v dash that fits this line. Indeed, if you've got anything that's a reflection, any line perpendicular to the um, invariant line for that reflection, perpendicular to the mirror line, will be itself an invariant line because any point and its image will lie either side perpendicularly of the mirror line. So that's one of the standard situations where we get an invariant line that does not go through the origin. But you're never asked to expect it to actually work out such a line. It just appears and you're told to check it. And you check it by showing that the, um, the values of u dash and v dash you work out satisfy the equation of the line and we do that by putting the value for u dash in and showing that we've got v dash coming out. However, there's a different sort of invariant line you might be asked to look at. Okay, and this is one where you're told it passes through the origin. And we're going to do this now you might recognise this matrix. We used it for the line of invariant points. So we actually know this is going to be uh, one of an invariant line. Okay, the question is is there another one and how do we get the first one to come up? Well, we're going to consider a point on the line y equals mx. We don't know the value for m. This is going to become an unknown. What's the image of this? We're going to call it u dash v dash. Okay, so u dash v dash is equal to just the matrix times the initial point u m u. Okay, so we can multiply that matrix by that vector. Okay, and then we're told if v dash is on the line then v dash is equal to equal mu dash. So we get a very long equation here. Okay, this is v dash is on the bottom and this is m times u dash. Okay, we expand the brackets. We've got a quadratic equation. We've run out of space here, so we carry on on the next slide. We've got the same bottom two lines we've occurred on the top here. Right, we have our quadratic equation. Okay, we factorize our quadratic equation and you get our two solutions. And so we can write down what our two invariant lines are, y equals x and y equals 3x. Now, when we looked at this earlier on, we found that y equals x was indeed a line of invariant points. But now what we know is that y equals 3x is an invariant line. So we've solved the problem, but let's just check our final answer. OK, what happens to the point 1, 3? Well, we put 1, 3 in here. We get 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. We get 3 minus 2, lots of 3, so we get minus 3. Oh, uh, yes, it's gone from 1, 3 to minus 1, minus 3. And actually, if we put minus 1, minus 3, and it goes to 1, 3. So these places swap around. So what we've shown in this case is that there are two invariant lines and in this case, one of the two invariant lines is a line of invariant points. To show something's line of invariant points, we've got to do more than what we've just done. We've what we do at the start of the video of showing the points are invariants. You should find there's never more than two invariant lines because for a two by two matrix, because after all, we end up with a quadratic. So there's only two values of M, but there might be one or there might be zero. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video. The next video will be on three-dimensional transformations. Thank you very much for watching.